I'd like to welcome one more speaker on this topic of what the private sector is seeing today. Uh, Matt Hayden is currently with Exeger and before that served as the Assistant Secretary of Homeland Security for Cyber. Matt, take it away for us and then Suzanne and I will leave it to you to uh, introduce our keynote speaker from CISA, Chief of Staff Kirsten Tote, who will be interviewed today by Mr. Frank Salufo, a cyber expert in his own right, who's now leading the cyber program at Auburn University. Matt? Welcome, Matt. Perfect, thank you. And, and when we start talking about top of mind and, and following Chris Inglis's list of the things he's got in his strategy, collective defense is, is where we are working with our, our constituencies and our clients, as well as it's a great way to celebrate leading into a speaker for CISA. When we talk about collective defense, we're talking about how are we learning from cyber incidents, how are we finding those weakest links, where are we putting our resources to bear so that everyone has the tools and the knowledge moving forward into these. And so when we talk about collective enterprises such as JCDC and things the like, uh, when we start talking about how we respond to solar winds and the colonial incidents, uh, I like the way Director Anglis put it. He, he talked about a light touch regulatory pattern. And, and the challenge we have there is transparency until those that are sharing the information see enough of it to discern these patterns and the need for reinforcement, investment, and action. There's not really going to be that early warn system that we all need in that defend forward or collective defense model. So that, that regulatory body and as they move gingerly into that market is something that we're going to have to have just to get these critical infrastructure partners visibility into somewhat times with each other's uh, networks and operations. JCDC is a great example where that operational collaboration is. Uh, we, we hear a lot of our clients asking, do we need to be a part of JCDC? And I'm saying, look, if you're a critical infrastructure partner, you're getting the advantage of all of those that have visibility and scale across the critical infrastructure networks and, and that insight into where these threats lie and not to fear, CIS is taking that operational know-how, working it through the interagency, and now you have a known vulnerability catalog that is listing all the exploited vulnerabilities that they're finding. Now, the dark little secret is it's, it's a binding directive that they sent to all their federal agencies, but guess what? That is for every private sector or operator as well. So the great news is we're getting good information out. We're getting context on that information. It's not at the speed of machine. That is coming. The challenge with AI and speed of machine is that, that goes both ways. Not only do we have to be able to detect at speed of machine, we'll have to be able to defend at speed of machine. Uh, Kelly brought up uh, encryption and challenges with that. We're also going to have challenges with our space infrastructure. A lot of these things that have existed in orbit since the 60s might not be the most secure environment out there. So that's just laying out a lot of things that are at the foot of anyone inside the CISA building, let alone Kirsten, who's running as a chief of staff over there. And what she's got on her plate also involves how are we going to get the mission-driven employees in this building? How are we going to build a workforce that not only resembles the mission need, but also takes advantage of all those diversities out there? They're taking advantage of contests such as participating and sponsoring uh, cyber warfare events. They're doing uh, partnerships with DOD and others to do contests across the board. I, I joked with them they need to have a, loss, a last Starfighter video game. Whoever wins, get a job at CISA. You know, this is the kind of thing we really need to put out there because that is a huge challenge ahead. When we look at the way Log4j hit as a, a, a vulnerability that impacted such a broad number, it's a reactive posture. How do we get in that preactive, uh, proactive measure and how do we work with our entire supply chain to get that software bill of materials out and, and in the place to where it becomes regular practice? Uh, I like the way it was just presented as business as usual. Uh, how do we get business as usual to be collective defense? And at the same time, that lowest chain not being taken out by a nation state actor uh, because they left a vulnerability wide open that we've got listed on every web page at stopransomware.gov. So um, it's hard to challenge uh, anyone to give five minute pitch to get CISA properly credited for the first year they've done. Hopefully I did a decent job. Uh, Kirsten, let me turn it over to you now and let you take over and, and really run with it. And thank you so much for your time today. 